Hey there, game makers. Once again, we have been gifted, hooray, praise the overlords with the newest iteration of Game Maker, where we get some new stuff to play around with. So here, this is where my personal favorite is. And then a small thing at the very bottom. Yes, that one is pretty sweet also. And of course, it comes with a caveat. So once you update it to the newer version, you cannot go back. So for example, older IDs cannot read your newest project file. So this is a not backwards compatible warning from my side. Alrighty, so let's start with the bling blings, the newest filters, because I guess this could be fun to look at. So if you just want to see the stuff, here it goes. Contrast, fractal noise, which is basically kind of a fog thing. Gradient, and then, uh, well, that's pretty cool, I love that. This, this is a fractal noise, and then color LUT, which is basically color correction. This is for my more advanced uh, people. And then twist blur, I guess that's all right also. So let's just jump right into Game Maker and check this out live. So let's go for the first one, which is, do -do 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 contrast so let's go and here uh, take that and then nothing has happening and then you can set up the brightness and the contrast if you use whoa photoshop um i guess you can use this as a i don't know you can actually use this as a um, transition from one room to the other one of course there are more efficient ways but of course um there are multiple ways into Rome. So this is the first one. That's all right. Why not? It's a good, nice little tool. Then we go to the my favorite uh, newest edition, which is Fractal Noise. Boom. And this is actually creating fog. So this is pretty cool for, for color blending, for creating a little bit of a, a foggy background. This is what I use in my own game also. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. And now you can actually use that and uh, play around and create that uh, the way you like. Of course, for like this, this is not very useful because as you can see, it's overlaying way too heavy. But once again, OneUp Indie has a quick fix for that. What you can actually do is have a black uh, sprite, then have some opacity on it, and then boom, we can actually with the inspector play around, play around, and then as you can see, now you have it. And then for example, you wanna have it a little bit more uh, black boxy here so let's save it and then you can see it in the room ah, it's more and then have it a little bit less of course I will make a video more detailed about that and as you can see we can have a box with a neat little effect instantly everywhere we like of course this is the lazy man's way to do it but of course a pretty powerful one it is in any case so let's go back to the thing which I like to show next so for the next bling bling, which is the gradient, uh, the well, it's just gradient as far as I know. So here, wow, that actually looks pretty neat. Uh, but I didn't want to use it here. So gradient, gradient, and as you can see, you can create your own gradient, and then you got some I don't know ways how you can uh, set this up if you like. Mm. All right. So once again like this not too terribly useful but of course if you apply it on something uh, then it makes a little bit more sense so the same as the fractal it is situational then we go to the lut color gradient and as you can see nothing is happening nothing is happening and nothing is happening this is just basically taking colors and then replacing it with other ones and therefore you can make some color correction for this is just basically for more advanced users and then we got the last one which is the twisted well blur we got twist distort and then for example once we do this we twist and we can actually do that with the blur also why not pretty cool feature you can play around with that too so let's go into the more uh well the stuff which is part of stability issues so basically they are about to uh, release the long-term stable version that just means that this thing will once it is set up uh, work uh, and then for example all updates will not for example have some uh, backwards compatible issues because now we are in a long-term stable version and I guess and then these things would be a thing out of the of the past and then um, hopefully uh, the 
all the errors, the issues which we had with um, previous updates, where for example things weren't be working, are then things of the past and then we are pretty much fine with that. And then for example the next thing is further new functionality. Basically what you can do is enable or disable strict mode. This is if you just put it in a nutshell, making uh, the Feather system de detailed or less detailed and searching for errors and, and things. Um, so once again, uh, let's go into Game Maker. Where can you find it and enable it? Just go on the preferences, Feather, 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 Feather settings, and then here you go, enable strict type mode, and then it will go more in detail or less detail. I guess if you go to more detail, it means that it will search for more stuff and then take up a little bit more of resources. But as far as I've seen, Feather is still lightweight on the system in any case. So this is pretty cool. Then let's go to the next thing, which is even more filters uh, that I showed. Then remove platforms. So UWP, you will not be missed. <laughs> and all the other ones have been removed. Um, old stuff, which most of the people won't be using anyway. And then uh, tile encoding. This is the reason why it's not backwards compatible. Basically, in a nutshell, uh, they encoded uh, the tiles as far as I know. And then um, compiling time will be faster. So once you load it, it will just be faster. That's it. And then improved uh, audio playback. That is actually a pretty sweet feature. So let's go into Game Maker. And yeah, normally, if you just uh, did audio play sound, you had three things, the sound file, then the priority, and if you if, if it loops or not, so for example, if it just ends, now we got new stuff, gain, offset, pitch, and listener mask. So let's actually check out what that means and it entails. And these things are optional, so if you just leave them out, they will not be um, taken into account. So this is pretty sweet. That's why they are in those brackets. And then, for example, volume game. So basically, you can um, instantly have the volume being uh, put in and out. This is pretty sweet. And then start point in seconds. So for example, if you just want your uh, sound effect to start a specific point, not just always at the very um, zero uh, well, point of, of the sound, but for example, in between or two seconds later, whatever, now you can. Then pitch multiplier. This is pretty sweet. So for example, if you change the pitch, Let's say you have footsteps and each time the footsteps sound the same, but you want to have them, like say, um, well, more realistic, then you could each time have a different kind of pitch here set, and therefore you got realistically sounding footsteps or shots or whatever. This is very powerful and very easy to uh, use. Very cool. I love that. And then Bitmask, not sure what to do with that. Alrighty, that was it from my side. Once again, not backwards compatible, long term stability. New functionalities for feathers or detailed or less detailed. New filters. Yes, fracture noise. Excellent. Love that. And then old stuff removed. Blah, blah, blah. Don't really care. And then improvements on audio uh, stuff, which is optional with pitch and so on. Alrighty. Hopefully you enjoyed this. A little rundown of that. And see you the next time. Have a good one. One up indie.